Hey everybody, this is Hercules Penix, founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Hercules Penix Academy of Comic Book Studies. Today we're going to be looking at the experts and a few other various and sundry publications, all by Portland cartoonist Sophie Franz. Um, I discovered her work a couple years ago. I was at Floating World Comics here in Portland, and I found these two little mini sketchbooks. Um, usually I'm not a fan of sketchbooks, even artists that I love. I want to see art in store. I want to see comics. Um, they're fun to flip through, but I don't really even feel like I need to own, like, just a book of sketches by whoever, even if I love them. But her art was so striking to me that I had to pick these up. They were like $5 a pop. No year on them. I don't even know when they came out. I think they came out relatively recently when I got them. So I think this came out in like 2022, maybe 2021. That's my guess. But uh, just beautiful. Um, a lot of color art, too. I just couldn't believe how amazing her art was, so I picked them up. Um, a year after that, maybe, I went to the Permanent Damage show here in Portland. And the Sophie Friends had a table. And I got to introduce myself, and I kind of fanboyed on her. And she was just like telling her how amazing I think she is. And unfortunately, I was broke at the time, so I could only pick up a few things. I wanted to get everything on our table. But uh, I got a few more things, and we're going to look at them today. So let's start with the experts, since that's the um, first chronological publication we have here, as far as I know, because some of them don't have dates on it. So this is uh, published by Retrofit. Beautiful comic. It's nice cardstock covers, beautiful printing and coloring throughout. Love this coat cover very just creepy and unsettling nice front piece here great graphic design i love that so basically uh there's this research installation on the ocean and these sea creatures are constantly popping up and just kind of checking them out Here we see them, very creepy looking. Kind of reminds me of a Al Columbia monster. You know, just really oh, unsettling looking monsters. It looks like they're trying to communicate maybe. Nobody really knows what their purpose is. There's a dog at the installation. The Colonel is his name. And of course, he always freaks out when he sees them. He's like, what the fuck are you guys, <laughs> what are you doing here? But look at that just beautifully drawn water. Oh, that's amazing. And this is a while ago. She's gotten better. So we meet our cast of characters. We got Frankie, who inexplicably has a fish head. <laughs> um, they never tell us what the hell's up with that. It doesn't really seem to phase anyone either. We got Tracy here, and we got Charon. Uh, Frankie is saying something about like, oh, more of those uh, creatures are out today. Uh, yeah, they're really pretty harmless though, right? <laughs> and Tracy's like, harmless? What about Charon's finger? So we see this, uh, apparently, one of these creatures bit off Charon's finger. This page reminds me of uh, kind of Chris Ware-ish, diagramic, if that's a word. Just so well drawn. You know what they always say, hands are really hard to draw. That's amazing. We see the little flashback to when she got her finger bitten off. She was just trying to feed one of the creatures and it chopped her whole finger off. Look at this, the colors on this page. Amazing stuff. Here's the installation, full view. So apparently they're kind of stuck out here. Um, they don't even, they're the experts who are researching these creatures. I think they're researching the creatures. Nobody even remembers what they're supposed to be researching what they're expert in. So it's got that really, like, just bizarre... Um, like, if, if that was you, you'd be freaking out, right? You'd be like, oh my god, I've forgotten everything about my life. I don't even know why I'm here. They're just kind of like, yeah, whatever. This is life. This is what we're stuck with. I guess there's this uh, authority. Um, the people in charge um, send them care, you know, food packages. 
And they always write lists of what they want, even though they're never heeded. And then they tie it to the top of uh, the colonel's head. It's like every month or so they do this. And then they put him out on a boat. And he sails away, apparently, to this, you know, the authorities. And he comes back with, with the note gone. It's a really interesting way to do the fog. There's also this fog that is uh, omnipresent. Tracy's uh, doing some narration here, and she's talking about how they've all changed so much. Here's Frankie before it became a fish. Um, it seemed like when the fog got heavier, things started to change. Sharon, when she was happier and she had long hair, but now she never smiles anymore. We see a flashback to the, those old times, and they were throwing crap in the water just because they're bored. And Tracy throws a pen in the water, and one of the creatures just catches it. That's like one of the first times they met, saw the creatures. Tracy seems to have some vague memory that she's an artist. Well, she can draw very well. So she's like, maybe I was a, a field naturalist? She doesn't know. It's, for no reason, all their memories are gone. I like this uh, next three pages. We see each of the characters in their cabins. Just these little snapshots. Frankie is forlornly looking out the window, waiting for the Colonel to come back. He really likes that dog. And then we see Sharon asleep in her chambers. And we see one of those creatures peeking through the porthole. And it looks like he's kind of tapping on the window, somehow communicating with her. And she gets up takes her shirt off and drops it by the, on the dock and jumps in the water. And then we see her join the sea creatures. I love this page, just like, uh, we don't know what happens, or, you know, it's like a, it's a nice way to like fade away to the next scene. So the next morning, they realize that Sharon's not around. They're like, oh, where, where could you be? And the colonel comes back from his boat trip and jumps out of the boat and goes right to Charon's shirt and is sniffing it, kind of worried, like, where's Charon? And so Frankie basically says, that's it, I'm done. What kind of experts are we? We don't even know what we're doing here. I'm taking off, I'll leave with the colonel. I'm not gonna stick around till I disappear too. Tracy is, uh, doesn't like that idea. She's like, we can't just abandon our work. Or you can't abandon our work. But uh, Frankie just says, come with us. Really, come on, this is ridiculous. Let's just go. But Tracy doesn't. So now Tracy's all alone and she flicks a pan out into the water and Sharon's hand grabs it. I don't know what the hell this means, but it's so, such a great ending. I guess she's one of the sea creatures now. Nice little strange back cover too. So that's the experts. Now we're gonna jump ahead to 2022. And uh, this is a jam comic. Let me uh, get this a little bigger. Hope you don't get nauseous as I zoom in a little. And, uh, and let me just adjust this real quick. Okay. This is called Cyclops and Worm. It's a jam comic with a uh, Graham Barry, I assume is a, another Portland cartoonist. It says issue one. I don't know if there's a second one, if it ever came out. But this is pretty fun, you know, like jam comics can be. Sometimes that can just be nonsense. But both artists seem to have really committed to trying to tell a story, not just throwing in a chaotic panel to be funny, you know. They're really, uh, it's, it's definitely a linear story for the most part. And of course, it's zany because it's a jam comic. So uh, not only do we not know where the story is heading, they didn't even know where the story was heading as they drew it. Nice little front piece. And uh, I, like, I like this title page. Nice lettering. Little introductions from each of the artists. 
So we start off with the Cyclops, who's not Cyclops, not really even sure where he is. He hears this knocking as if on a door, but he there's no door. He's in these caverns. And so he's searching for this door. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> it's driving him crazy. Just wanted to point out real quick, that at first they started off alternating every single panel. And it tells you who they're by, G.S. And then later on, they get a little more loose with the rules. And sometimes they'll draw three panels in a row or two or whatever they feel like doing. But it pretty much starts off panel, uh, alternating panels. He finds all these uh, pictures, photographs of his ex, his ex-girlfriend. She's a Cyclops too. He's like, what are these doing down here? He also finds this picture of a snake man flipping off the camera. He has no idea what the hell's going on. And uh, the knocking's driving him crazy. And then finally he looks over and he sees a door. He says, where did you come from? It's locked. But then this little weird worm guy comes out of the hole. It surprises him so much that he trips, c cracks his head. When he wakes up, the worm's right on his nose here. I love that point of view shot. Crazy. Yeah, this Graham Bender guy's pretty good, but all the best panels are by Sophie Franz, I gotta say. She's just such a good artist, such a good drawer. So the worm seems to know more stuff. I think he's been in these caverns longer. He says, we should get a move on. The Bible thumpers are on their way and they're dangerous. And we see these people all holding Bibles and they are literally Bible thumpers. They just slap their hands in the Bible and thump them. I thought that was kind of funny. So they're surrounded. But apparently the worm has some kind of magical powers and he does the spell and he transports them out of there. Now we cut away to this uh, pet store. And the owner of the pet store is yelling for Jackson, his employee. He says, we got two more rats on the lamb. That makes 10 in the past five days. I'm on it, boss. So all these rats have been disappearing. And that's a great Sophie face, I think. Lots of character. And we find out why the rats are disappearing because when he goes into the bathroom, turns out he's a snake man. He's that guy from the photo. And uh, he's got the rats like waiting for him in this mop bucket. I guess uh, he likes to snack on him. The boss knows something's going on. He's like, Jackson, what are you doing in there, you slimy fuck? And Jackson comes out in full on snake, well, half snake form, and just says, Enough of this bullshit. I'm eating you. <laughs> and he goes after the owner. Meanwhile, some customers have arrived in the store just as uh, he's uh, Jackson's about to chow down. So he takes a big chunk out of his neck as fast as he can. He kills him, and then he goes out to the front of the store to uh, take care of these customers. It's these, uh, this couple, I think they're a couple, and he seems to know them, they seem to know him. They're just kind of insulting him the whole time. And Jackson's just like, yeah, yeah. yeah another great Sophie face of drawing Jackson. Meanwhile, uh, back in the, in, the, in the back of the store, the dead pet store owner, we see these, uh, hear these voices coming out of his mouth. Turns out it's Worm and Cyclops. They're like, ah, we're stuck in another cave. But it's really wet in here, and it smells like Marlboro Reds. So he, uh, the Worm transported them to the inside of this guy's mouth. And uh, Worm snaps his fingers and basically blows up the pet store owner into a pile of gore. And that's how they escape. All of a sudden, uh, 
the Cyclops is two eyes now. So not really a Cyclops anymore. And he's also man size. He uh, grew to the size of a normal human, you know. Couldn't fit in the mouth anymore. So uh, Jackson hears the commotion and runs to the back room, sees the exploded pet store owner and thinks it's his, that his venom is more deadly than he thought. While he's in the back, the couple up front realize that all the rabbits seem to be dying that are in the cages and they decide to liberate them. Meanwhile, we see uh, Cyclops and Worm that they hid in the bathroom. That's why Jackson didn't find them. I love how uh, apparently t the Worm uh, tells us that that guy's name is Jackson Five. Like the goddamn funk band? Yes, but more dangerous. I really like that for a name. So then the, the Worm tells his backstory. He was a very powerful sorcerer. A little too powerful because he got bored. Look at the Sophie Franz art. It's like, that could have been in an old uh, Warren magazine. Some good stuff. Yeah, it's so different when, when uh, Franz draws the worm character. Look at all the shading and texture. So apparently uh, the sorcerer, uh, worm, worm, who Worm used to be, he, uh, this this almost like space god named Aihe, I think his name is, how do you say it? Aiho, kind of took over his body and his mind, kind of mounted his head, and he lost all of his will, the sorcerer, and had to obey the commands of this creature, the space creature. There's another one that could totally be from a creepier, eerie, like great fantasy art. I do like the way this Aio guy looks. Very cute little character. That's a nice panel. So I guess Aio, there was a, a creature in the universe, an entity even more powerful than he was. And he was always like scared and running from this guy. And so one day he escaped. He basically put his consciousness, one of the tentacles on the head of Aiho, snapped off and that became Worm. He grew himself some arms and he had his free will back. And he woke up in these the caverns that we saw at the beginning of the story. He found the Bible thumpers and thought they were inquisitors because they look like this here, almost like KKK guys or like Torquemada's men. See, this is like later Sophie Franz All right, Look how good that shading is. She kind of reminds me a lot of uh, Farrell Daly Ripple, another Portland cartoonist. Um, not as stylized, um, but just the way she shades, like with the pencil. Just a really outstanding stuff. But some of the faces even do like, I could picture it being Farrell Daly Ripple. I don't know who came first, to be honest. I think Farrell was first. But I don't know how long Sophie Friends has been drawing. Like I said, earliest thing I could find was 2012. So Jackson's looking down at the corpse of the pet store owner, and all of a sudden these little guys come out. They're little Bible thumpers. And he takes one of them and pops his head like a zit. Yeah, it looks like that Barry guy didn't have a lot of time that week. <laughs> it's pretty uh, rough. All the Bible thumpers, all of a sudden, they turn around and get all scary. That's a pretty horrifying little monster there. He kind of looks like those uh, the sea creatures we just saw in the experts without the tentacles on the mouth. So the Bible thumpers attack him. And he stumbles out into the front room. And uh, the couple's there stealing all the rabbits. The rabbits jump out of their arms and start running around. <laughs> and then the Bible thumpers... 
leap up on them and mount them and are riding them around. So it's total chaos, it's total havoc. And those things are just devouring Jackson, it looks like. So, uh, Worm shows up and reveals himself to this couple. And he basically says, you know, uh, you know, you guys got to trust me. You might need my help. Yeah, it definitely looks like Barry was running out of time here. Graham Barry. A lot of his panels are pretty loose now. Like, look at this one. So the rabbits have grown to giant proportions, to unusual size, if you will, and along with the Bible thumpers. And they're just out in the streets going crazy. All of a sudden, this giant foot shows up. And the foot belongs to um, the Cyclops' ex-girlfriend that we saw the pictures of earlier. <laughs> That's a crazy upskirt panel there. So apparently she knows Jackson. She's saying, Jackson, are you in there? And the Cyclops comes out and says, Darlene? And she says, is that Dutch? And she gets really angry and reaches in and grabs him. And she says, where have you been, you deadbeat? We had a funeral for you. I really like that, uh, the worm in this panel. Look at the facility of uh, Sophie Franz here. It's one of those bells, you know, it's silvery. Just capturing the reflections on it, the light. That is like high level our artistry there. She totally knows her stuff. She can draw the shit out of anything. So uh, the Cyclops and his ex, they kind of make up. And they're like, I love you, Dutch. I love you, Darlene. And meanwhile, the, it's just total chaos all around them. Then now it really kind of spins off the rails. I'm not quite sure what's going on. But uh, something says, level up. You have unlocked the door to the next plane. And the pet store is now on, on the hunk of... Uh, Earth floating through the air. And then we meet these two new characters who we haven't seen before. Love the character design on this kid. That is just really good stuff. And uh, yeah, look at the difference here between the way Franz draws the worm with all this luscious texture and shading. And then Cranberry is just... It looks like he took three seconds to draw that. It's like Sam Henderson art. But look at that face. And then it just kind of has this goofy ending, kind of fizzles out. So I don't know if they ever continue this, if they ever plan to continue it, but it's a lot of fun. I mean, like I said, it's always fun reading a comic. We have no idea where it's heading and just, they didn't know where it was heading, so of course it's going to be like that. We have a an official fan club membership card for Cyclops and Worm in the back. I couldn't take it off, though, because I realized it was ripping the art under it. And uh, we get a nice little... looks like a nice little drawing of Cyclops by Graham Barry, it looks like. And yeah, there's just a panel, I think, from inside. So that's Cycle and Worm, 2022, as I said. Definitely some fun stuff. Now I want to look at the first two minis that introduced me to her work. And these are the ones I picked up at Floating World. And I'm going to zoom in again. Because these are very tiny. And I really want you to see how beautiful these are as, as much as you can. Well, maybe I went too much. Sorry about this. I know it's probably annoying to be watching this shit. Okay, we're good. So, uh... Let's look at this one first. No title on this one. It seems to be just beautifully painted portraits of people, maybe her friends, maybe people she saw around Portland. Just look at that. That's amazing. These are so beautiful. I like how well observed they are too. Like it's almost like, 
I get a sense of these people's personalities. It's, it's very photorealistic, but not in that boring photorealistic style where it's lifeless. It's totally got a warmth and life, I'm sorry, life to it. That is just, I usually don't like art like this. I'm like, oh yeah, I admire the skill. But this to me is so appealing. I guess that it is very photorealistic, but there's a roughness. Oh, look at that. I've totally met that girl. <laughs> Not literally, but. These are just so good. Though that one I don't like so much. <laughs> But the other ones are all amazing. I met that guy at the bar. Aren't these just stunning? I love these. Kind of looks like Nicolas Cage. I think that might be Farrell Daly Ripple. I met the guy once years and years ago, but I have no visual memory. But I don't know why, just the hat. I barely know, I don't know the guy, but I'm like, I think that's him. This is a self-portrait. And this is what I mean by the roughness. It's like, just look at that. It's just kind of dabs of paint, but it's all you need. It completely captures it. Her face is all blurry. And, but it just looks like a blurred photograph. But better than that. It uh, just has this great sound. I love the little rough background. That's one of my favorite ones in the book, actually. <laughs> this weird looking kid. This is one of the ones that totally was just like, I know this person, <laughs> not this person, but I've met someone like this woman at least once in my life. <laughs> like just looking at her face, I know her. And that's what a lot of these are like. And that's a really hard thing to do, I think, as an artist. She's really capturing these people's essences. Okay, then the next sketchbook uh, comic is pretty interesting. It's called A Record of Poor Sleep Hygiene. Insomnia Doodles. And we see more rough stuff, almost like layouts for the finished uh, work. And then we see these beautiful... Once again, beautiful. I don't know if it's colored pencil or painting. I'm not an artist, but it looks beautiful. And the, apparently, um, I guess it's called Insomnia Doodles because, you know, like a lot of people, if they can't get to sleep, they just put a movie on in the background. So I assume that she does that a lot and she likes to draw what's on the screen. So these are almost like screen captures. A lot of these movies I don't recognize. But just look at the beauty of this art. So good. Even the roughs, look at this rough. It's obviously dashed off, but everything's there that you need. Like she draws this jungle scene, just so amazing. I'm amazed looking at her stuff that, like she's not in the New Yorker or something. And I'm like for, for reals, she, she should be in, like, the biggest magazines in the country if they still had art in them. Most don't anymore. But the few magazines remaining that use art, she's got it. And she's totally got the skills to pay the bills. Yeah, I don't recognize any of these movies. Well, a few of them I do later, but not these. Such a great eye for color. This is kind of interesting here. It almost looks like um, kind of rough Mobius shading. Oh, gorgeous stuff. More great colors. I almost like seeing the roughs as much as the beautifully finished paintings. Just the facility she has. Looks like Macaulay Culkin. 
Is this Jurassic Park? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It's fucking beautiful art. That's what it is. Another great rough. You totally get, get it. Probably took her 15 seconds to sketch that out. It's like, gives you everything you need, all the information. Oi vey. I'm in awe of this woman's talent. <laughs> the Shining, obviously. And what a great uh, moment to capture the movie. That is just a great uh, little still. But filtered through who art, art is even better. More shining. This is what I mean about like drawing for like a magazine. Like, that's amazing. It's amazing likeness of that little kid in the shining. Beautiful stuff. I gotta think of more adjectives, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not a very good speaker, but Let's just say this is top notch. This is a higher echelon of excellence. Okay, and so last but not least, well, maybe it is the least actually, only because I'm not a big fan of diary comics. Um, I'm not a fan of autobio for the most part. And Diary Comics are the most mundane version of that. But these are pretty fun. It's called Eat Then Draw, a month of doodle comics. Nice cover. And this is just every uh, page is a little incident in her life. Kind of a gag. She d definitely has that, like, you know, knows how to do the four panel comic strip form. Where, you know, the setup, punchline, whatever. She does seem to have a good ear for, like, incidences in life that are, are worthy to document. They're, you know, they're not as... Some of them are really bad, these diary comics I've read, where it's like, dude, I don't care what you, where you went for lunch or something. Nice David Lynch there. It's just about her life in Portland, you know. Riding her bike around. Hanging out with friends. Having fun conversations with people. Just great cartooning, though. And I imagine these are pretty quick. She's doing them every day. But she just can't help to drawing well. Here's one where she's an artist model. I like how uh, she becomes invisible while motionless. When you're an artist model, that's what you feel like. But she says, uh, I'm still present. I can hear and I can see. I am painting you in my head. <laughs> Her checking out a band. Every now and then some nice color. We get some nice color work. This is gorgeous. She's so good at this. Just uh, her, her palette is so great. I like this one. She's thinking about her grandmother who's passed on. And just this apparently a very feisty, interesting woman. And, uh, she says, even now with her memory gone, her personality still manages to fill the room. And we see the grandmother in like some comforter, but it's spilling out as if its essence is just like running over everything. And of course, obviously, you know, rainbow colors, 
Really good use of color in a black and white comic. Oh, this one. It's fucking amazing. Beautiful. And you can tell their daily diary comics is some are a little rougher than others. Oh, so there we go, guys. I'll put it up to the camera. I don't really uh, know about Tumblr or what to, how to access it. I'm sure it's not hard. But uh, that's sophiefranstumblr.com. Another little self-portrait, of course. So that's it, guys. The Expert and Other Works by Sophie Franz. Amazing Portland cartoonist. I don't know if other things she's published. Hopefully her name's out there. I hope she's getting a name for herself. I hope people are finding her work. And uh, outstanding. Outstanding cartoonist. And I'm definitely on the hunt for more. So I hope you enjoyed looking at her stuff. And I hope to see you here next time at the Hercules Pettix Academy of Comic Book Studies.